It is all Rachel Casson as we pick her up here in plus one. Skiing very, very strongly round the outside there at the top turn and the boat looking smart. So is she looking very, very strong. We'll watch her here. Couple of bumps and Rachel Casson heading towards victory. She's on the final lap. We've got a nice close shot of the action. She must be getting very tired at this time, but those 1,000 big points will be spurring her on and travelling at about 170 k's at the moment. She's got one kilometre to go to victory. Further back in the field, watching some of the other contenders doing it tough. I know we've got Laurie Dumsmore down a lap. They're trying everything to get that back. That's the other American girl. And also we've got uh, a few problems for some of the others. Argo, Debbie Norblad, she's out there. She's running in second place at the moment as we pick up the Italian entrant again in Black Magic, Valeria Bruschi. Second of the American entrants out there behind Humble is that of Cheryl Rustin as we pick up the third American entrant. They were the ones that had problems at the start of this race. Laurie Dunsmore, husband Billy behind the wheel there. Interestingly enough, each competitor starts off with 1,000 points and they are deducted around about three points for every second that they finish behind the race leader. That's how the scoring system works. Plus one, the race leader coming onto our screen again, boat number 34. And the girl doing the great job at the moment from the UK is Rachel Casson. Have a look at this, the boat about 170 k's fast down this long straightaway. They're heading for the chequered flag and victory on 1,000 big points. It's a family affair, of course, for the Cassins and others. Rachel's father is the observer in this boat. We'll see how they go to the end. Fabulous shots from the helicopter now as Rachel Casson in Great Britain is almost towards the finish line now. She is off. Sensation and out there, and the race leader has come down big time at about 170 k's. Rachel Casson may have made the mistake of trying to race top gun to the line. Leanne Brown is now coming down to the finish line, but she is in fact one lap down. And if this is the case, it's been a tragedy for the English girl. Let's hope she's quite okay. Now coming across the line and taking the win will be Mirage from Australia with Leanne Hickey behind. And Argo coming across now with the American Debbie Norblad. That's a second for her after winning the first event. And the Italian girl, the lovely Valeria Bruschi, coming across in third place in a race that's been full of incidents, good racing and sensations. Coming up quickly with the slow-mo. You can watch this. Oh, thump. Down she goes. And then over again, two savage landings. And don't kid yourself, water is like concrete at 170 k's. And that's Rachel Casson's race run and done for her at 1,000 points. Certainly gone down the gully trap in that big crash. I don't believe this. Rachel Casson... What a brave young lady in great pain of the peers is back up on the skis. And I'll tell you what, if you're sitting at home watching this, put your hands together for this one because this young girl is determined to finish this course today. She had it all before her and may have made the mistake and it's only my presumption that she thought Top Gun was the race leader. In fact, Leanne Brown from Australia was one lap down. But Rachel Casson, a very sore and sorry girl, completing the course, the crowd putting their hands together for her and she's just laying there in the water. Switching quickly to... ...start line prior to the, uh, the flag being dropped. And that was, that's what brought that all about. And it, in the rule books, it states an automatic one minute penalty be added to everyone's time who crosses the line prematurely. It just happens that she was, we were about three or four seconds late in getting all of our rope out and she then did not cross the line prematurely. She was the only one that did not. So Australia loses the protest on this drama filled day here at the World Water Ski Championships. Let's now have a look at the leaderboard.
It's one hour before high noon. It's 11 o'clock in the morning at Darwin. We've had the ladies race this morning. It's now the boys' turn to go out there. This is 16 laps or one hour of the five kilometre course. And of course, it's oval shaped. Each one of these competitors out there is after the title being held by Australian Ian Dipple. And they're trying very, very hard with the speeds they're attaining at the moment. We're about 170 k's for the fast boats over this part of the course and the race is very, very young. I can see a challenge coming from the Italian Stefano Gregorio and also from the Americans. They're out there to win today as well. And maybe the New Zealanders will strike form and get amongst it. The Italian boat on the scene at the moment with Stefano Gregorio, very plain looking boat in one way, but very fast in action. Top Gun there with Jason Campbell aboard. He's one of the aspirants of this. Humble also joining us out there. And look, we've got a boat slowing dramatically on the left there as we pick up rock solid hand signals coming from the observer and we'll see how they go Corey Cook from the US is skiing behind rock solid Boat 238 moonshot out there with Ian Dipple the defending champion as we go to the chopper with a magnificent barometer at 30 degrees as they go round the first bend in the Shell Marine World Water Ski Championships into race two from the start, the uh, water condition looked like they could be a little bit rough, but of course the course is actually inshore and we should see some great speeds out of the boat here today. Love the style of some of the skiers that are out on the course. They're really settling down. Top Gun coming back in wearing number one. Top Gun, of course, with Jason Campbell. One of the hot favourites, this kid. Uh, very, very strong in statue and a great skier. We'll see what he can do before the series is out. This is the second round of the four-round series to decide who's going to be the 1991 World Water Ski Champion. Stefano Gregorio quickly coming into scene and as he leaves us we see Dennis Rowbottom with the New Zealanders behind him. John Scott's the guy. And picking it up is rock solid. Have a look at these guys. 170 kilometres moonshot there with one of the top contenders. Of course the running champion Ian Dipple. Waving the boat up there. We also see plus one with Chris Thorne aboard as we go to boat cam and watch the observer work in this particular boat. And he's sitting back there seemingly with an easy job. But let me tell you, he is the eyes of the skier and the connection with the driver. Billy Dumsmore in the 157 boat out of Los Angeles in California, the United States of America. They're on uh, lap five of 16 here. Just taking note that the beautiful pictures coming to us are from a special device called Boat Cam. The technology that's gone into this is absolutely amazing. This guy's doing nearly 170 k's and the picture is crystal clear. Observer waving him up. Beautiful shot from the chop of the race leader. Starting to get away from it now. Jason Campbell in the lead behind Tommy Hughes's Top Gun. Has this boat got some get up and boogie? The big block Chevrolet working overtime but doing a fantastic job with this young Australian behind it doing his equally competent task. Power plus. Tommy Hughes sitting there. The Italian boat. Thunderbolt with Gregorio sitting behind. He's doing a good job. My three sons chime walking at the moment. In fact, they're almost losing that boat and they'll want to get off the loud pedal and readjust all the finer technical points of the rear equipment on it before they get brave at that speed again or they might end up with a wet tail. We've got three Italian entries today and Macho's pulling one of them with the twin outboard powered boat, something different. Stu Johnson coming on the screen in recession, towing the Canadian Dennis Martin, who's about to be lapped by the race leader coming through. They go Tommy in boat number one, Top Gun with Jason Campbell. Three quarters of the way through the event, we see the defending world champion. The boat is on the bottom part of the screen. The boat, of course, is uh, Moonshot. Ian Dipple is the skier. Lester Freem handled the driver. And have a look at that magnificent shot. Looking back towards Darwin. This is, of course, Fanny Bay, where this event's taking place. The boat's on your screen, the tail enders, I think, running 6th, 16th and 11th, respectively. Firebird running third at the moment. Boat number 10 with Paul Robertson. He's skiing very, very well and is a real chance to challenge Dipple for this title. There's two, this is, sorry, the second of four races to decide who'll be the 91 world champion. And of course the Italians, they're here to have a shot of it. Stefano Gregorio on the screen at the moment. Back to the Americans and Boat Cam. 
Billy Dumsmore looking back a little concerned. I'm not quite sure what the problem is there. They're towing Marty Wells and Dave Misson is the observer in this one. Slowing the boat down slightly and uh, it looks to be from the expression on Dumsmore fa Dumsmore's face, he's a little concerned. That's him coming around. Wells, of course, behind the boat. He's looking okay. Wonder what the problem is. We'll talk to him later. Water here just a little rougher, obviously. The boat, the turbulence uh, coming along as the race goes by, as we mentioned, getting towards the top end of the event. And we've got the race leader, boat number one, Jason Campbell, hot and strong around another turn. Tommy Hughes really got the bit between his teeth, and this boat is absolutely awesome. Campbell looking at the opposition. Legs working like shock absorbers. Paul Spinks, what sort of speed are we doing at the moment? Interesting, Ian. I've just been speaking to the Darwin Police. They've clocked them on the police radar at 158 k's. That puts the speed down a little bit, as even to the women's, where Rachel Cash and reached speed in excess of 170 kilometres an hour. Interesting other point as we're watching Top Gun here, mentioned earlier by you, is the ballast. Because of the calming waters, the ballast has been completely dumped from the boats, allowing a greater speed. Disappointment for Canadian Dennis Martin in the water as we pick up third place, Stefano Gregorio from Italy. He's going very, very strongly at the moment. So is this man on the screen, Ian Dibble, the defending world champion in second place. Like a reeler from America, looks like he's about to be a quarterback for a gridiron team as he gets behind Humble and really hooks it. We've got Firebird with Paul Robertson, the outside favourite for Australia. Now the series is winding up a bit. We've got him going very well as we see Sergeant Peter Budd from the Darwin Police pluck out our unlucky Canadian friend. And there's the race leader, boat number one, with Jason Campbell aboard. Tommy Hughes, the driver, and Campbell's got it really hooked up and flying. He's going at super quick speed. They're actually picking up time now as we see the 178 entry. That's the Italian Stefano Gregorio. He's running in the third spot at the moment and looking very, very good. We've got the defending champion here, the world champion that is, in Ian Dipple. And now we're back again with the Americans. Some comment coming from the Canadian. It looks like it may be a boat problem that caused his demise today. Here's Top Gun rounding up the field. And we've got Jason Campbell telling him to get up quicker and quicker as the Italians come front on the screen here for us. There's Gregorio, a crouching style, a little different to the others as he comes up behind their boat, which is Thunderbolt. All sorts of action coming our way before the end of this race. The Americans on the pace and back with the show. There is the champ, Jason Campbell. He waves them up as he goes towards the checkered flag. Can you believe that? 100 miles per hour we've got them at the chopper and he's waving them up. Waving them up? Goodness gracious me. He's got to be a brave guy, but he's out there on a mission at the moment, Jason Campbell. He's trying to be the 91 champion and at the weight he's going at the moment behind Tommy Hughes' boat, he is going to be just that. The checkered flag and it's Jason Campbell for Australia for the second time home, race two. He'll be a happy camper, Jason Campbell. He's come home in first place for this one. Running third, the Italians in 178. Gregorio going for it down to the line. And by my calculations and the Samsung recording unit, it's going to be Dipple across the line in second place. And that's going to be the way that round number two of the men's is going to end up. Here comes Marty Wells. There's the determined look and the sigh of relief. The victory signal coming from Billy Dunsmore. It's not over yet, there's still two races to go, um, a lot of things still can go wrong, but I'm fairly confident now, like after the second race you normally know what's going on. And unfortunately, Paul had a bit of a bad run today, um, broke a rope at the start, which put him a bit behind, um, and Ian, he's still up there, but now with a thousand point system it works on how much you beat everyone by time and on the point score, so we're about a minute ahead on times, there's still two races to go. With Australia first and second in the men's race too, and a clean sweep in the first race, they're proving to be a very hard team to beat. Let's now have a look at the leaderboard.
It's early morning race day and we're out here with the Northern Territory Rangers checking the course for crocodiles. After all, we don't want any of the skiers becoming victims of fast food. With only one hour to race time, we've just spotted our first croc just over there. The trouble is, it's not in a trap. I don't think we'll be telling our skiers about this sighting. Race 3 takes us 10 kilometres west of Darwin to the Elizabeth River, filling the requirement of the world body that one race must be completed in either a river or lake. The women must complete 12 laps and the men 16. Into the three-quarter mark of the Shell Marine World Water Ski Championships, it is at this point for teams not featuring high on the leaderboard will have to make a move. Because of the requirements by the skiing associations, it's difficult for spectators to come out and watch this particular event. But if you've got a boat, you're in business as we see them coming around for the start of this event. And have a look at this. Everybody trying to be a hero. And of course, this is the point where if you're not doing good, as Paul said before, you've got to turn the whole thing around. And trying to turn around to her advantage is Leanne Brown behind Top Gun. Tommy Hughes out there doing it again. Great pictures. We go to boat cam aboard the Sting pulling the, the English girl, Jilly Clements. And of course, uh, Priesty doing it very, very well there. And you'll see him touch that trim tab every now and again to his left, your right. And that, of course, uh, does those super little U butte things with those hydraulically controlled flippers on the back of the boat. There he is now adjusting it. Maybe a little bit of rough out here. They may use the ballast at the front of this particular boat. It is one of the boats fitted with it, but you can see that modern technology is in ski racing. Top Gun out there with Leanne Brown and coming on very strong. Here comes Honest going through and that's of course Timmy Fidos on her second lap in this event. Beautiful shot of Top Gun there, the race leader with Leanne Brown from Australia chasing this title left vacant by the absence of Marsha Meyer from the USA who unfortunately injured herself in the qualifying race to come here to Australia. And Hickey from New South Wales in Australia running in uh, second place at this stage. And Argo out there, one of the top boats today with Debbie Norblad from the USA. Honours coming back into the picture with Timmy Fidos. Now getting well down into the path of the uh, of the race with Humble also going along with the second of the American entrance in Cheryl Rustin. Race leader again coming up, and all before uh, is Leanne Brown in Top Gun. Mirage is pulling Leanne Hickey on the screen again. Is Argo with Debbie Norblad, and there's Humble running sixth. And charging down to the chequered flag to take out the third round of the Women's World Water Ski Championship is Top Gun with Leanne Brown from Australia. They're going to win this one. Running in second also from Australia is Leanne Hickey behind Mirage coming into screen now. And third place from the USA, Laurie Dunsmore from the USA. And just behind her, Argo, Debbie Norblad also from that country. And the only other finisher on that lap is honest with Australian Timmy Fidos coming there. Humbles a lap down. Cheryl Rustin from the USA, the skier there. And the Sting, Julie Clements from Great Britain, making seven of the top ten in Heat 3. In the second race, we broke the rope at the start because it got a knot in it as it went out. But today, everything went well. As long as everything goes well in the next race, I should still have a chance because I can drop the second race. And hopefully we'll be able to win again, so we'll be up there. Just got to try to win by as much as we can. Leanne, she sure took off fast. It was fast water. We're used to a little bit more rougher conditions, and that's what world championships are supposed to be, rougher conditions, not so much smooth. I know she took off. Both Leanne's, they skied really good. Debbie, too, I got her, but geez, it's tough. Boats on the water for round three of the four round series for the men's world championship water skiing. And of course the spectator boats joining us as well at the mouth of the Elizabeth River. If you can work it out that I'm on a reasonable line, we'll let them go out of their way to get around us. Okay. But I'll let you know though, there's something on our yeah, 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 yeah. Matthew Northover talking to Cliff Priest about the tactics for the Sting, their skier Cliff Featherston, and the moment of truth, round number three of the four round. Men's World Water Ski Championship is away, as I said before, in the mouth of the Elizabeth River here in Fatty Bay, Darwin. This is the World Water Ski Championship Series, and this is the second last event for the guys. They've got to do it. Out in front at the moment, my three sons, 
with Pierre Antonio Cami from Italy. But have a look at this, the charge of the Light Brigade chasing them. And amongst them, some pretty desperate skiers at this moment. There's the Canadian entrant from behind the recession, and that is Dennis Martin. So he's trying to get it up. That's nearest the camera. And of course, the other Italian entry there behind the other outboard. The hard charges at it again and wouldn't want to believe it. The Italians are right amongst it. Their inboard entry there. The boat is Thunderbolt. Stefano Gregorio is the skier. My three sons there on the nearest the camera. On the outside of them was Jason Campbell. And now we're picking up Humble coming along very, very quickly. And on the inside of him, an unusually slow Dennis Rowbottom towing one of the New Zealanders. That peculiar view from boat cam looking forward to plus one. Chris Thorne, of course, the skier behind this unit. And you can see the jolting that both the driver and the observer get. And, of course, the spray that hits them. The Italian's back on the screen there. Here comes Top Gun. Jason Campbell up again. He's chasing the title. Ian Dipple, the man of the moment with that. He is the 1990 champion. And Campbell up there and trying very, very hard for it. Here comes Dipple behind Moonshot. The water becoming rather choppy in this one as we pick up plus one again. The Englishman, Chris Thorne. Inside line being the quickest around the boys for some of them. It's been interesting to see the tactics a lot of these guys have been using. Thundernuts towing Glen Townsend coming up very, very quickly as we go back and look at Moonshot with Ian Dipple behind it. Dipple doing it very, very nice at the moment. He needs to chase points. Race three out of four and the title's still well open where fatigue starts to take its toll. Remembering, of course, that after the completion of this race, 280 kilometres of racing has been done. I have to wonder what uh, is happening with the Sting at the moment, whether their pre-race chat is working for them. Here comes the leader as we pick him up. And it's the Italians, and right behind him, Tommy Hughes. Humble, Mike Avila for the USA, climbing into the boat. It looks like he's had a fall and lost his ski, climbing back into the boat. Top Gun running second at the moment, Jason Campbell behind that. My three sons, the early leader in today's race. The outboard towing one of the Italians. And have a look at this, the race leader, Stefano Gregorio. And Gregorio waving him down. Maybe fatigue striking the Italian. Second place at the moment, Jason Campbell. And running third behind Firebird is Paul Robertson. The race still wide open, winding down though in time as we see the 46 boat go past us the sting with Cliff Featherston behind him. Plus one on our screen now, Chris Thorne, the skier, well down in the field at this stage in time. Although we've got a problem here, it's Top Gun. They've lost Jason Campbell, and the Italians have realised that they're waving. Australia's Jason Campbell, Top Gun, race one and two, was the winner of both. He'd be extremely disappointed at the moment. A spill could cost them the championship. Hands picking up the race and carrying on in boat number 178. And now they can take it easy. A few signals coming to and fro there. Firebird now in second place. This will put Paul Robertson's points up even more. Uh, the Robinson team, of course, the three brothers, the skiers, the observer and the driver. We're aboard the Sting and Boat Camp. They've got a problem. They've lost the skier. We've got the observer there thumping away at Cliff Priest. Matthew Northover indicating Featherston's off. And they've gone back to pick him up. Race leader, and he'll be the race winner, Stefano Gregorio in boat 178. And in second place, Firebird. More big points for Australian point drop with Paul Robinson. And as we take up boat cam, just settle back, watch these pitches, and appreciate the speed of ski boat racing. Approximately 160 to 175 kilometres an hour. And if you think that's quick in a car, you wait to see what the sensation like in the boat. Getting Featherston back up out the water. Cliff Brees calling on those 1,000 horsepower sitting behind him in the sting and gets him up and running.
What's Pierre Antonio Kami doing? Maybe he likes the salt water down here in Darwin better than the local grappa. Fabulous shots from a helicopter now as Dennis Robottom's island cooler John Scott's gone for a Darwin walk and he's in the water. Almost breaking out the vino. Benny Grazzi they're screaming out in the Italian boat at the moment. Stefano Gregorio, the toast of the Italians, but the race is not over. Till the fat lady sings, we'll see what happens. Here comes the challenge. But it'll be boat number one. He's down in time. Jason Campbell had that fall a little earlier on. And he's going to make up some ground. So probably a lap he's got to put back there. We're going to find that out very shortly. The Sting with a problem again. They've dropped Cliff Featherston off. Not sure what time they've lost. It'll come up on your screen quickly from the computer. Circling around it to try and do it again. But it's certainly a tragic loss. The Italians again. And Firebird, Ian Dipple. Will have to do some absolute miracles. The Sting now. Gets Featherston up out of the water. This is their second fall in this event. And very, very costly for the British. Stefano Gregorio, the race leader in 178. Still looking a little limp on the matter. And uh, let's see what Paul Spinks can observe from the chopper. Oh, he's absolutely exhausted. Slow down is the word, slow down. He can't hang on for much longer. He's probably putting too much at the start. And we pick up Firebird. And he's trying to get his act together, Paul Robertson. And looking for those big points. Here's the defending world champion. Australia's Ian Dipple, and he's looking just the opposite to Gregorio. He's looking strong. Back with Gregorio again, Paul. Yes, it uh, looks like he's just about had it. There's only a few minutes to go, but can he hang on? I don't think he can. He is absolutely exhausted. I mentioned fatigue. It looks like it's going to be the case. Challenge coming up for Gregorio. The moment of truth. Paul Robertson getting amongst the act now. And it's the two of them going for it. Gregorio's waving his boat down. But they seem to be not listening because Gregorio appears to me to be speeding up. What's your observation from up there? Yes, I think you're right, Ian. It's, uh, is that what's happening? You can see him gain on Paul Robinson there. Well, <laughs> a few words. I don't understand swearing in Italian, but I guess there could be a word or two. Spaken in the pits after this one, whatever the outcome. And now rippling muscle back amongst the action. There's Gregorio in the 178 boat. And outside of him is Robertson. Everything's a chance here. There's Gregorio on screen. And they come around the bottom turn. This is going to be interesting stuff because we're not far away from the checkered flag. Firebird there. Paul Robertson's boat. And it's really going hammer and tongs. Signals coming from the observer. And there's the Italian boat coming along in second place. Gregorio battling to hang on. I'm not sure what the hand signal is. Here comes Dipple. He's in the act too. Everybody trying to be a hero in the last few minutes of this race. And then we've got one of the boys looking very, very swish with himself as they come down to the dying minutes of this event. Meanwhile, back with Gregorio. He seems to be almost buckling at the knees. Or is he bending over for winter? He's dropped the rope.